Welcome to Insight. Today we are chatting with Reverend Cecil Williams, founder and minister of liberation of Glide Memorial United Methodist Church. Minister, author, activist, advocate for the poor and disenfranchised, spiritual mentor, and tireless leader in the fight for justice, Reverend Williams, along with his wife and founding president, Janice Mirakatani, have evolved Glide into a strong community church with 11,000 members of all backgrounds and religions. For 45 years, Glide has served meals to the poor, fought against abuse of women and children, helped people to recover their dignity after having struggled with drug abuse. Well before most others raised their voices, and at a time when doing so risked alienating supporters, Reverend Williams embraced the LGBT community and his support has never wavered. Glide ministered to HIV AIDS victims at a time when few others would. Glide educates youth, provides supportive housing, and funds community medical care. Reverend Williams has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us, and I would like to thank you, Reverend Williams, well, for you. taking thank time you. to join well, us. Thank you. Today, Glide is such a force in San Francisco and in the world with an amazing congregation, an amazing array of programs. I believe over the years there have been 83 uh, different types of programs. You have supportive housing, you have health services, you have celebrations, you bring people together, you help people to recover and go through their own journey. But when you first came to Glide, that wasn't Glide. You're right, it sure wasn't Glide. Uh, in fact, they were about to close the doors of the church. Um, when, I, when I walked in the doors of Glide Church, I said to myself, this is really chaos. It is really going to be a difficult situation. It is really not going to be easy at all if in fact something meaningful and something vital and something that is critical will emerge. Uh, and what I've got to do is understand that, uh, that this place uh, has potentiality, but it may, may not work, whatever I have in mind. But I came with something when I walked through those doors. I came with uh, a commitment to be different. That's vital in what I do, even now. I, I wanted to be different. I wanted to be different than any minister, any human being, anybody in the world. I, want, I wanted to say that, uh, and, and, and to myself, that I have really done the very best that I can, but I can't do it if I'm gonna be uh, mediocre. Uh, I, I didn't wanna just follow the script. Uh, I didn't wanna just follow what others may be doing because that would not be, I think, getting at the core of the lives of people. And I began to say to myself, what I've got to do is reach people in their most desperate needs, at their most desperate needs. What I've got to do is let people know that I am not there to just do the regular stuff. Uh, there's no need of me opening the doors of this church again if I'm going to follow just regular stuff. Uh, stuff meaning regular policies, regular uh, participation, uh, a lot of meetings. Uh, if in fact uh, you had people there to meet, first of all, I, I, when I went there, there were 35 people, of course. It was not a huge congregation at all. But, but there was a thing that just gnawed at me, something that just kept getting at my guts, that said, if you're gonna do it, make a commitment to do it in a way by which you become prophetic, hopefully, that you will stand up and make sure that, that justice is brought in this church and that justice will prevail. So my participation then was based on a commitment that I had come up with, which had to do with being different. And being different meant being a, a, a preacher, a minister of justice. And difference, it's, it's so interesting that difference is not 
just for the sake of being different. It's, yeah. it's distinctiveness, but in that distinctiveness, it, it is connected to excellence. It, yeah. is, it is connected to beyond the mediocre. And, and, and so it, ha it has a purpose that is beyond ego. It, yeah. is, it, yeah. it, it is about creating that unique contribution that you as an individual can bring. That's right, that's right. You're very perceptive to, to, to articulate that because most folks think that when I say I wanted to be different was that I was sort of a sham, you know, just kind of putting on, playing the game also. This uh, same game that I was trying to get away from, you know. And, and so the critical thing, though, is you have to go through some stuff, some real, let me put it another way, some real trials and tribulations. So you have to go through chaos. You have to go through critical uh, participation. Everything's not worked out for you. You have to, here's my term, you have to take risk. And, and to be a risk taker means that you put yourself out there and you never know how it's gonna come out. Uh, you can hope that it will come out, but you never know whether or not it will come out for people, with people, helping people, being with people, uh, studying people, exciting with being excited with people, changing people and they're changing you. All of those things enter into the picture. So your perception of being different is right where I, I think I was trying to live my life and where I still hopefully try to live my life. I want to make a difference in the world. And, and change is about risk. If, yes. if you're not going to make, uh, take any type of risk, or even if you're going to only take considered, well-reasoned, pre-planned risk, yeah. Yeah. You're, you're not going to drive change. No, 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 no. See, change uh, to me is not like um, uh, writing it down somewhere and saying, okay, Change will do this, and change will do that, and change will work here, and change will not work there, and then just having a kind of systematic way by which you do things. One of the most inviting things that I've done in my life has been to, uh, to be a jazz musician. Let me put it, my, my lifestyle is like a jazz musician. Uh, if you know the melody of your life, if you know the melody, you know who you are. If you really know who you are, then you can improvise, you can extemporize, you can be spontaneous, you can, you can approach the world and people like, uh, like uh, yeah, I hear you, I know you, I understand you, but here, here I am. And I'm gonna, here I go. Here I am and here I go. <laughs> the, back, the back and forth. Yes, the back very and much forth. so. And that's what's exciting, you know. I'm, I, again, I'm like, I do it like jazz music. I, I want to be spun. I want people to loosen up. I want people to be free. See, bottom line of Cecil Williams is this, that God has set me free. And therefore, I can go, man. <laughs> And you've gone to places that few people would have had the courage to go to because there was so much to lose. Yeah. When, when I think about your entry into this congregation of 35 people, and the next year, the next year, you start the uh, journey of very public support for the LGBT community. Yes. And this is in a very tenuous stage in your in your entry into the community. Yeah. You, you, you come in, you come into this small church that's on its knees where they're about to close the door, and then you take this, this step. Yeah. Now that's, that's not the, the, the step of somebody who's thinking primarily about his own career and his own self-preservation. Yeah, yeah. Well, there were others there that uh, had made a commitment. Not several other ministers came in also. So we, all of us worked in the direction on when it came to the LGBT community. Uh, we, I had friends there, I had people there, staff there who, who took it on too. They were, we, we were just very excited about being able to get to a community that I think all of us had, may have dreamed that we would be able to work with. But uh, 
but it took some inertia. It took some way by which we had to take it, lift it up and say, okay, here's something we're going we're gonna to do. And of course, uh, what happened was there was called a, 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 a position paper called the uh, Council on Religion and the Homosexual. Right. And that, that, that document was one of the first documents that came out as a statement in support of, of, uh, of the gay and lesbian community by which uh, we began to understand what it was like to be with each other and we began to discover also what some of the problems were that we needed to confront and that had not been confronted. Uh, I, I recall uh, one of the ministers and I went to, uh, to when there was a, a group of uh, gays and lesbians who were going to hold a, 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 a big uh, bash, a big party. And uh, it was very important that we do so. And uh, we uh, reported that to the police department, this is what we're going to be doing. So nothing would happen. Right. Nobody would be hurt. Nobody would get arrested. And they said to us at that particular time, what are you doing this for? You know, like, well, why, why are you trying to push this issue? Don't you know that it, it, will, it will do you in? Don't you know you won't be able to do uh, what you need to do because we're going to make sure that you don't? Right. Uh, this is not, it, it, this is not, religion, this religious, this is not Christian. And of course, we said, well, you know, we have a commitment to, to participate with all people. And, and we, wanna, we wanna do this with, uh, with our friends, our brothers and sisters uh, who are part of, of, of this community, of the gay and lesbian community, bisexual and transgender community, we do. And they said, well, uh, do you believe in, in, in some of the things that you are proponing, proposing to do? We said, yes. Well, of course, when the, the night that the event took place, they came and they arrested some of the lawyers. They wouldn't <laughs> arrest the ministers. <laughs> they arrested some of the lawyers, you know. And, and, and they, they, after that, they knew that they had made a mistake because what happened is later on, just a little later on, some of the officers who had made the arrest came to me and said, we did the wrong thing. We should not have done that. And it changed. It changed the momentum of, 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 of the community in this area, in the, in, in the Bay Area. The community began to say, uh-huh, wait, wait, wait. We tolerate things. That's one thing about the Bay Area, and specifically San Francisco. It's a community that will tolerate things. Now, I don't always believe in toleration. To tell you the truth, I'd like to see things move much faster than just tolerating something. But the important thing is that, that the discussion began, the participation began, and we began. And, and your, your act was actually a dialogue. It was, it was communicating with your body, with your presence, with your voice, with your actions. And in a sense, the the communication continued through the arrests and continued through the apologies. Yes. In, a, in, a, in a real sense, through that dialogue, you created transformation. Yeah. And it was transformation that was incredibly risky yeah. for yourself, right. for, your, right. for your position, for your congregation, for your future of Glide. We did something also that's not printed very much, but it, it was very critical. We passed out in the Tenderloin this is where most of the poor of, the, of San Francisco is located. We, we printed over 80,000 cards. And on those cards, we had five directions. If you were stopped by the police, here's what you do. Number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. Well, of course, at that time, the, we were at somewhat odds with each other because of, of what we'd been doing. And uh, so they immediately uh, came by a group of officers, three or four of them, and, and visited and said, what are you, why are you putting these out? And we said, well, we want people to know that they have rights also. So again, here's justice creeping in what we were trying to do. And that's what we promoted and we continued to promote. Again, dialogue taking place where we could make sure that, that nobody ever said uh, without any doubt, 
these folks are not serious. We were serious and we were committed and a lot of things happen. Uh, when, you, when you take a position, and like you said earlier, take a risk, it means that either it's a risk for change or it's a risk for change that will occur one of these days. Our risk will always to make the change occur in, in the now and in the present. And your dialogue with, with the police, with the officers, ha has also transformed a lot of the relationships in the inner city. Mm -hmm. Uh, between law enforcement and the community and between yourselves and, and law enforcement. I've seen the, the, um, the friendship that seems to uh, revolve around uh, Glide as, as, a, as an inner city uh, church, as an inner city service organization and how supportive that relationship is. And so through that, that beginning of, of officers coming to you and saying, what are you doing this for? Yeah. And the engagement. Yeah. Is, is, is part of the key that, that while you might disagree, there doesn't seem to be a personal condemnation? Yeah, yeah. See, that's very important because I think that most folks feel like that if you disagree, then you have put yourself in a position of no response and also of no reconciliation. And yes, and then they close it off completely. Close it off. Yeah, and I think that that's where Glide has been key in what it's always done. We have gotten into trouble many times, but we have also been respondents and creators of reconciling, of what we would call of engaging in unconditional love. Always love is there. It's always there, no matter what the circumstances. I recall a situation where uh, four people uh, came to the Sunday celebrations and all of them had swatch stickers uh, printed on their foreheads. And you walk in Glide with four uh, swatch stickers printed on your head. Man, I'm t and the, the folks at Glide were very upset and wanted to, several of them, wanted to engage in more than, I think, physical combat. I, no, 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 let's do this. Let's not, let, let's just love them to love, love them to, to life rather than love them to death. Let's don't do anything that would create a problem of violence because we could not engage in acts of violence. And what happened is, uh, they came, they kept coming. For four Sundays, they would come with these swastings. The fifth Sunday, two of the men uh, and two of the women dropped out uh, and were cleaned, uh, forehead, had clean foreheads. The other two or four continued for about two more weeks. And then finally, they all took it off. And when we began to talk about what had happened, they said, we want. We were trying to excite, ignite something. We were trying to, we were trying to push you to the brink of the of the community. We were trying to push you to the ends of the world. We wanted you to react. We wanted you to do something, and you didn't. What you did is you just kept saying, "We're there. We're we're with you. We're we're, we're going to come together. We're going to make sure that all of us do this off. Do it together. We're not going to put you in a place of of anger to the extent that you." you're ready to, to take us on physically. And it worked, and it worked. And you know, some of them became some of the best members we've ever had at Glide. You know, there's so much similarity between what you've just described and what we've learned from the Pearls. Uh, Daniel Pearl's parents, uh, we've been working with, with them for quite a while. And they are determined, just as determined, having suffered this incredible act and the loss of their son, they are determined to not allow that to turn to hate. And they have dedicated uh, his foundation to transforming the dialogue, mm. uh, particularly between uh, the Islamic world and, and other um, religions into one of peace. It seems to me that the key to Glide is that we do practice unconditional love. The key to Glide is we do practice unconditional acceptance. And now I'm working on a third notion, which has to do with, uh, with unconditional equal equality, a mutuality, being mutual with each other. Jan and I, my wife and I work on that. 
being mutual. Uh, I've had to move from a position of uh, being a man. Of, <laughs> <laughs> of, oh boy. Of, you know, you know, that my life was changed enough to, to begin to say, okay, I've been on, you know, I've been the big, I've been out there. I've been the one who's given all the leadership and, and even when you tried to get it, I, I, wouldn't, I was trying to push you back. And, and, and that's not easy to do. It's not easy to become mutual with your spouse. It's not easy to become mutual and equitable in what you do in how you do it. And the, what all of the things that occur, uh, little things, big things, those things that make you have to face yourself. And I've had to face some trying times, you know? And it's really, it's made me the, the most human person that I, I think, I never thought I could do this. Never thought I could reach this far. Being an African-American man, and here I am like, you know, saying, let's, let's move, let's come on, I need, and, and she's saying, let's walk together. And I had to look and say, oh my God, you're here, you know? Yeah, let's walk together. But it was not easy, and it hasn't been easy, and it won't be easy. <laughs> you, you have to almost strip your ego and, and, and confront yourself as, as, as this person, strength, weakness, need, that you work your entire life to, to cover and yeah, to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. And, and, and in a sense, what you're also saying is that changing the world starts right here. Right here. Yeah, sure. Right here. Sure, sure. So when you come in to Glide, you have 35 congregants, you start to take positions. It's, it's also fascinating to me how you, you go out and you start embracing people who others have traditionally uh, blamed yeah. for, for their state, for people who are drug addicted, yeah. uh, for people who um, have committed crimes. Um, for prostitutes. For prostitutes. Yes, yes. People who are on the fringe of society, people who are not accepted, people who are not wanted, people who are not desirable, people who don't act like us, people who don't, uh, who, who may be very angry at us, people who may persist that, uh, uh, that uh, you are you are the ones who've done me in, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna let you love me. I'm not gonna let you accept me. I, I don't want you around me. You know, a lot of a lot of not only hatred there, but just 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 a lot of uh, emotions and feelings and and uh, interaction that has proven uh, that uh, that nobody wants them. And that hurts a lot. If you're not wanted, if you're lonely, if you're desperate, if it hurts a lot. And so a lot of people have been hurt. And what we have to do is begin to get under that. Uh, we, have to, we have to go to the root of the matter. We have to know that, that people uh, may, not, uh, may not want us around, but still there comes a time if we're going to reach out, if we're really going to reach out, where we must desperately let people know that uh, we are with them in spite of what they have been through and what we have been through. So it's that in spite of, one theologian calls it that, in spite of. And you know. can't always pick your time. Sometimes yes. the time just picks you. I, I've heard a number of stories of people, you might have had an event, you might have had somebody of uh, international prominence there, and somebody gets up who is very angry yes. in the middle of the event, you take that time right yeah, there. Right there, right there. And, and that's, see, that's what gets at the folks, the fact that you will take time, that we will take time. And not only do we take time, but we will show our concern by really listening See, you have to have, I was saying to the folks a few weeks ago, you know, that the sound is very important to me. Just sound, just listening, see. Listening to you is very important for me to know what you're saying 
so I can understand how I can respond to what you are saying. Uh, and you can feel that I'm listening to you. Uh, many times we don't feel like we're listening to folks and they don't feel like we are listening. But that's very important because it lets you know that I'm not only interested, but that I respect you and that I care for you. And I want you to know that I respect and care for you. And if people only experience being passed over, being passed by, not being listened to, yeah. that shuts them down, that creates that response. We've had folks at Glide, the many, many programs that we have, and they will say to us, you are the only for people that we've been around who took time, who also heard what we were saying, and who loved us, who cared for us. They're, listen, this is a great time to be alive, because there are all kinds of things that are taking place, I think. Uh, young folks, for instance, f exploring all kinds of things. I don't know what, you know, blog, blog it means. I don't know what tweet, 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 blogging, tweeting, like tweeting. yes. <laughs> I don't know what all that means. But it, 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 it looks like they'd get, a lot of folks get excited over it, you know. And I'm, I say, okay, well, I, 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 what I will do, though, you see, with all of that is I, I, I will listen I'll make sure that there are folks around who can listen also and can help me uh, know what, what's being said at times because I need that. I, I don't have a computer and I don't have a computer because I have worked vividly to reach people in, in my humanity and, and, and in what we call soul. I, my soul, my heart, my eyes, my, my ears are open. And, and so what I do is respond to people with my imagination and with my creativity and with my understanding of who I am with them. So I don't have all of the mechanics, the technical stuff. Uh, and, and I feel like if I can just continue with some of this other stuff, that I, I will be there working with people no matter what the circumstances, you see. But it's interesting, you, you talk about your modality, but you don't shut off no. uh -uh. what you don't know. Mm -hmm. In fact, you, you purposefully open up what you don't know into, into new realms. You That's just, right. That's right. You got it. When I went to Glide, I went there knowing that I was going to work with the poor. Because when I came out to look at things, uh, when they invited me to come and see, I could see that the Tenderloin was right, on the, right in the midst of Glide. And I said, you know, this, this, can, this is a place that can change. I don't know whether it will or not, but, but it's a place that can change. I may not be able to help make it change, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be here to try to shake it up. That's why I took the cross down. When I took the cross down with the people, and uh, there were a number of them who were very upset, the 35 folks who were there were very upset. And... Uh, when I took the cross down and I told the, the, the construction people, take your time in taking the cross down. I don't want it to come down in a day. I don't want it to come down in a week. I want it to come down in a month or so. Because every Sunday I want to preach about what I'm doing here. What does this mean, the cross coming down? It means that I was bringing the suffering to the people from there, from up there to down here. So one wasn't sitting in, the, in these comfortable pews watching the suffering. Yeah, they were there in the midst of the suffering, in the tenderloin. The programs were geared toward breaking the cycle of people being away from to, to, to the cycle of being involved in. 